If you are a student who's watched this video and has decided to apply to South, congratulations. Next, congrats to me as well, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Probably done I think job. you did a good job. Did a good job as okay, an ambassador. Cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know admissions officers don't like us to talk about it. Coming as an international student, it was obviously a bit of a culture shock when I first got to Boston. So I heard a little rumor. No matter how hard I think admission officers try to shake off, they, they're not able to shake off. Mm -hmm. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Spill the Tea with CC, where we get insider insights from students who've walked the talk. Today, we're very excited to talk about Tufts University, a private university in Medford, Massachusetts. Recently, Tufts has risen in the ranks in prestige and acceptance rates have dropped this year to 10%. If you're interested in Tufts or any of the other universities we cover in this series, do be sure to hit subscribe, like this video, share it with any of your friends who are thinking about going to college College. One disclaimer, this is one student's experience and is not necessarily representative of all the students who've ever gone to Tufts, but this might help you pull back the curtain on what it's really like to be a student on the Tufts campus and graduate. So I'd like to mm -hmm. welcome our very exciting guest for this episode, Anantia. Welcome, Anantia. Can you introduce yourself? Thank you so much. And just to correct you, one second, because you said that I don't represent all of Tufts. Actually, mm -hmm. I've been voted to represent all of Tufts just recently. Have you yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they just love me Wonderful. so much. They're like, you so, know what? Yeah, I speak, I speak for all of Tufts. No, <laughs> I, 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 I don't actually. But that's the kind of quirky, witty humor you can maybe wow. expect to hear as you're walking around the Tufts campus on a fall day. Um, but yeah, my name is Anantia. I graduated from Tufts in 2020. I have a double major or a BA with a double major in economics and international relations. And, you know, I think Tufts was a very good, a very transformational period for my life as colleges for most people. And I am very thankful um, for my time at Tufts. It really helped me grow as a person. Um, I will try to be as candid as I can because I think not all universities are perfect and Tufts obviously has its flaws as well. And, you know, I think through this conversation, I hope to bring out both the good and a little bit of the bad mm -hmm. and everything else you should know before applying. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So let's dive in with why you chose Tufts in the first place and why you felt like it was a good fit for you. Yeah, I mean, Tufts is interesting, right? I, and I think a lot of Indian students think of applying abroad. A lot of the Ivy Leagues come to mind, like Harvard is a name that everybody knows. MIT is obviously fantastic for engineering. Um, Tufts for me had a little bit more of a personal connection. So um, as you guys probably know, Shashi Thur, MP in India's parliament, hopefully going to get another term. He attended uh, Tufts' Fletcher School of International Relations and Diplomacy. So he was a Tufts graduate and somebody that I used to look up to when I was younger. So Tufts was always a name that was well known to me. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was making my college list um, eight years ago, uh, I, I remember Tufts like stuck out to me for that reason. Right. And upon doing a little bit more research, right, I think Tufts stood out to me because you know, it's known for its academic excellence and rigor without being overly competitive. Mm -hmm. It's cl situated close to Boston, so you have access to all the opportunities and recreational opportunities available. And I know admissions officers don't like us to talk about it. It has this weird, unconventional kind of nature to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little maybe different from other universities. I think all of those things really appeal to me when I have leisure. Okay, great. We're going to dig into all of that later in the episode, but I want to start by talking about your academic experience. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to your overall impression of the curriculum, the coursework, the professors, advisors, and how did that really go for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, so Tufts is obviously a liberal arts college, and while there isn't a core curriculum, there are distribution requirements. So I think you're supposed to take two courses in sciences, in humanities, I don't remember what all of them are. But there are a certain number of courses or types of courses you have to take. And I think this was great because it does encourage you to explore a little bit. So when I first started off at Tufts, I did everything from like theater to international relations, mm -hmm. which is what I ended up majoring mm -hmm. in. And I appreciated that encouragement to kind of explore and try out different courses. In terms of the academics itself, I think Tufts is a good school. And some of the faculty are some of the most distinguished and incredible people you'll meet. Like my advisor, Professor Greenell, was somebody that I really looked up to and just gave me so much valuable insight and advice into the world of international relations. I think that being said, there are certain ways I think Tufts academics could be strengthened. I think some of the lower level courses when you're doing like a intro to microeconomic theory or the intro to principal economics, those classes tend to be larger and maybe taught by a visiting faculty. And I think some of those professors maybe don't have the same 
investment or the same experience right. I think some of the most senior faculty do. Right. Just a caveat. I mean, overall, still great professors, but maybe not the most leading people in their fields. Yeah, understood. Yeah, it's good to get a sense of the, you know, both sides. Um, but I'm glad to know that you generally had a positive experience. Um, you mentioned some of the classes you took. Mm-hmm. What was your favorite standout class that you took in your four years at Tufts? Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. So I, like I said, I had a double major in international relations and economics. So there were a lot of like, you know, dry classes in there about Hobbesian mm-hmm. theory and national security and intelligence. But I think one of my favorite classes in my four years was a class on Russian film. Uh-huh. So it was a survey of Russian film from the late 19th century to present. And you got to see the development of Russian cinema from its very like early Soviet beginnings to its very experimental nature today. And like this is a class that I didn't realize how much I would appreciate it until I took it. I think it opened up a new avenue of interest for me, uh, not only in like, I guess, understanding different culture, but in film itself. And that's something that I carry with me today. Awesome. So interesting. I think that encapsulates like, you know, the breadth of offerings at Tufts as well, right? Like just because you're an econ, you don't mm-hmm. just take econ classes, right? You can obviously dabble in interesting electives and stuff like that. It can really change your perspective. Let's move now to your outside of classroom life, your extracurricular life at Tufts. What kind mm-hmm. of clubs were you a part of? And can you speak a little bit to that experience? Yeah, I think Tufts is great if you're somebody who's looking to explore your extracurriculars and maybe you felt like you were in a little bit of a box or just didn't have the time to explore when you were in high school. So when I was at Tufts, I personally did everything from fencing to um, model UN and debate. So just a wide variety of interests. And um, yeah, I, it, it's weird, right? When I was in high school, I used to have such bad like public speaking anxiety. I could not talk in front of people. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I got to Tufts, I remember like seeing the sign for the debate team and thinking like, can I do this? And like, I, I think this is a way in which I think Tufts really distinguishes itself. My entire process from applying to like getting into society and all the support that I got mm-hmm. was just so unique and so helpful Mm -hmm. and it allowed me to do something that initially I would be terrified to do in high school Mm -hmm. so yeah just the opportunity to find yourself and explore new interests I think Tufts really stands out in that way awesome so I heard a little rumor that you were in not one not two but three fraternities so (laughs) spill the tea on that and to what extent did Greek life play a part of your experience and the overall kind of tough social life in general Chandra, I, I, I hate to burst your bubble, but I actually was not in one, two or three fraternities. I was actually in, in zero. That what was, are you saying? That was something our, our colleague Ashish was joking about. Oh, that was a joke. Yeah, that was a joke. So were you not, <laughs> is there Greek life? Greek, okay. There is Greek life at Tops. But you weren't part of it? No, you know, no, I wasn't part of it personally. I think Greek life, to speak on it as an outsider, is interesting though at Tops. It exists. I remember when I first joined Tufts, there was a little bit of a scandal with Greek life. Without getting into all of the murky details, there was a very strong push to just ban fraternities all in all Mm -hmm. um, on campus. Tufts didn't end up following through on that, so Greek life definitely does exist on campus. And if that's something you're interested in, like there are avenues for you to do that. Greek life at Tufts is tame. It's not as crazy as you would get at a larger like public university in America. So yeah, if you want to dip your toes in that, it exists for you. But at the same time, if Greek life isn't your thing and it just like scares you, there are so many other avenues for you to explore. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to zoom out a little more now. Mm-hmm. I want to ask about life in Boston. You're an international student. Mm-hmm. You went from Delhi to living in Massachusetts. So I really want to understand what it was like, the transition, the new culture, the new weather, living in that city, mm-hmm. and also the interactions that you might have had with, say, some of students at the other universities in town, right? Whether you ever got to cross, collaborate with those. Mm -hmm. No, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think a Boston is a fantastic city to be a student in. There's a lot to do, like just museums you can enter for free or at highly discounted rates. In terms of internships and job opportunities, all major firms and companies have headquarters or businesses in Boston. So it's a great place to be. Coming as an international student, it was obviously a bit of a culture shock when I first got to Boston. I will say that having a very supportive community my freshman year, especially in my dorm, shout out to my Tilton folk, um, that made <laughs> it, it made the transition so much easier. 
um, I thought the people were generally very welcoming. And I think it opened my eyes to American culture and allowed me to kind of insert myself in a very smooth and in a very easy manner. Mm-hmm. And yeah, like you mentioned, Tufts has so many other great universities, right? So within Cambridge itself, you have like Harvard, you have MIT, Tufts is in the vicinity as well. In Boston, you have BU, you have Northeastern, lots of great colleges. For me, like my interactions were, I think, more on the limited side. I mm-hmm. think a lot of staff students prefer to just stay in the little nook in Medford and mm-hmm. will not always venture into Boston. Um, but that being said, like, for example, when I was doing debate tournaments, the fact that like there was Harvard or BU close by meant that I could compete and meet other students. Right. Um, but I didn't have to like even leave Boston to do right, that. Right. So that space for collaboration definitely exists. Yeah, seems like a good benefit. Was there anything that really surprised you or shocked you um, about moving to the US? <laughs> uh, I think there's small cultural things that you just need to like pick up on. Right. Um, I mean, this, this is just a funny memory from when I was a freshman. You know how you dab somebody up in the States? Mm-hmm. Like you kind of like slap hands and you pull back, right? So the first time I was meeting somebody like an, an American and he came to dab me up and he like held my hand for a second. I was just so thrown back. <laughs> I was like, bro, like, why are you holding my hand? <laughs> but that, that's just how you, you say hi that's there. That's how you say hello. Yeah, that's how you say hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, these small cultural things you do need to pick up on. But right. it's, a, it's a fun journey. Like, I'd say, like, 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 don't be scared. Put yourself out there. Like, people are generally super nice. And I think you'll end up learning a lot both inside and outside your classes. Totally. Such a good point. <laughs> Awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about life on campus. Tell us what are your favorite sort of student memories or any traditions that stand out to you at Tufts? Oh, the aspect that stands out most to me about Tufts is um, is the uphill downhill debate. Okay. So uh, for those of you who don't know, Tufts is based kind of on a hill, um, and um, there is a and then the way the campus buildings are placed, the way the residences are placed. You have half the student body that lives uphill and half the student body that lives downhill, oh. right? Mm-hmm. And there is a perpetual debate about which side is the better side of campus to live on. And it, it, it's, it's just uh, something that really, I think, unites the Tufts community. So while you're just walking down um, or on campus, maybe you're on the press lawn, you'll hear somebody arguing about, hey, you know, uphill is great, but do it, like our dining hall, just you can't beat the food. And you have somebody else jumping in be- and being like, hey, you know what, you know what, downhill is great, the food is great, but the uphill residences, mm-hmm. you just can't beat them. Mm-hmm. And I think that that like kind of um, atmosphere is, is, is something that I really found fun. It's just a, a fun way, I think, of a, a fun, um, I'd say, quirk that connects all of Tufts, like this debate about what's better, uphill, downhill, which is, which is so much fun. Mm-hmm. On the whole, it seems like you had a positive experience, mm-hmm. right? What is it about Tufts that made you absolutely love it and... Um, something that you, an experience that you may not have gotten elsewhere, perhaps. Hmm. I, I think the two things that stand out to me most about Tufts and the reasons I think I love Tufts, I think the first is um, in just in terms of the academic atmosphere, right? right? So when you're a student at Tufts, you're going to meet other super ambitious, super hardworking people. They're incredibly bright and they do really want to change the world. Unlike some other institutions or colleges, um, in the in, in, in the states, Tufts is not cutthroat. Like that atmosphere does not exist. Like students are more than willing to share notes with each other, mm-hmm. help each other out on tough examinations. Right. Like it's not like it's not competitive and that people don't try hard. But I think all in all, the atmosphere is a lot more um, supportive sure. and collaborative. And like I think on that note, generally, I think Tufts is exactly that. It is a very good nurturing atmosphere. I think a lot of people come into Tufts. A lot of people leave high school, like, and they they trying to figure out who they are as a person. And I think if you're this person who's kind of unsure about your place in the world, I think Tufts is a place where you can find your place. Mm-hmm. Before I came to Tufts, I had a hard time doing debate. I never imagined myself like like debating at Harvard ever when I was in high school. But Tufts and this community allowed me to do that. I never saw myself playing the guitar and through the help of my support and on-campus activities, I was able to do that. I never saw, saw myself like working on a podcast, but that's something I got to do too at Tufts. Yeah. And it gives you the time, the space, the freedom, the environment to to yeah, just try out all these things and find who you are. 
So I think that's something really special about us. That's beautiful. And how important for, you know, young 18 year olds who are just emerging in the world for the first time. Yeah, um, yeah. I want to ask some spicy, juicy questions <laughs> okay. now um, to get the real tea on Tufts. Mm-hmm. Number one, like what's the biggest stereotype about Tufts students and how true is it? Uh, so it's kind of funny and this is like a reputation that no matter how hard I think admission officers try to shake off, they, they're not able to shake off. Mm-hmm. Um, Tufts has a reputation for being quirky or unconventional mm-hmm. and this is something that if you're for example a campus tour guide, you're not allowed to describe Tufts as quirky, they're just like no, you cannot no do way. that. Yeah, That's yeah, yeah. It, it, it's kind of in our blood, right? So you think about our mascot, our mascot is Jumbo the Elephant. Jumbo the elephant was originally like a circus elephant his, whose skeleton was donated to Tufts by P.C. Barnum, mm-hmm. the American showman. Like we literally had like a living skeleton in our campus for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And I think at the turn of the century it burned down. Okay. <laughs> it's just so freaky. And then Karma. It, yeah. <laughs> and it was replaced by like a, like a statue, right? Yeah. Um, I think there's something just unconventional and weird in our blood, mm-hmm. but in a good way though, yeah. in a good way. It is maybe unconventional, but it, it gives you the space to find out who you are. And I think the other, I think stereotype about Tufts is that, oh, it has like a very like inactive social life. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Greek life is kind of dampered down and maybe there isn't a lot to do. I remember like a few years back, somebody made a TikTok about how like boring campus life can be. And the the TikTok was like a party at Tufts where like (laughs) nobody was having a good time. Literally (laughs) good time. But I mean, I I think if you're the kind of person that wants to party and wants to go out and wants to have a good time, that community exists for you too. Like there's nothing stopping you from having that. All of Mm. these things, they have maybe a notion of truth to them. But I'd say don't be swayed too heavily, negatively or positively by either of those um, Mm -hmm. reconsiderations. Got it. Thank you so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. So now after listening to this whole podcast, if a student has decided that Tufts is a really great fit for them, Uh and it seems like a place they'd love to go, Uh what is your recommendation for, you know, getting in basically? Like how do you appeal to such a, like such a selective admissions committee and really highlight your differentiated fit and value add to a community like Tufts through the application. Okay, yeah, absolutely. If you are a student who's watched this video and has decided to apply to Tufts, congratulations. I guess congrats to me as well, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Probably did I think job. you did a good job. Did a good job. As an ambassador. Cool. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tufts, I hope you're watching. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one quality I think Tufts really values is civic engagement. I think mm. we have a campus that is politically active, socially conscious, and if that's something that you can demonstrate that you've managed to, you know, just exhibit in your personal life, something that you've managed to tie in very well with your academics, I think that's something that Tufts really, really values right. and cherishes. Mm-hmm. I think if you're the kind of person that can, you know, be a really good student, but also apply that to making a real difference in your community, that's the kind of person that Tufts really looks for and would consider a great addition to their campus. Yeah. I'd say that's not something you can really force, right? That's not something you can fake. Mm-hmm. So if you're that kind of person that already considers themselves, you know, socially active and academically interested, I think Tufts might be a good fit for you. And I'd, enc- and I'd, and I'd encourage you to explore that thread in yourself a little bit more and see what you can do in your um, profile. Yeah. 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 Do you remember what your college essay was about? I do, I do, in fact. Um, so I guess for a bit of background, my my father, he, he suffers, suffers from polio. It's something that he got at a very early age. And growing up in India, I spent like a lot of time by his side, right? So I kind of got to experience the world through his lens. Like very simple things, for example, going to the movie theater. Like for us, it's a very simple act, right? You just buy your ticket, you walk down the stairs, you sit down. For somebody who's, you know, disabled it's a totally different story like they, there aren't handrails there isn't a ramp or there isn't like a electronic chair to guide them down to their seat that kind of support just makes i think space is inaccessible and i think delhi is particularly inaccessible in those ways so something that i worked on was a documentary on how on wheelchair accessibility in delhi so that you know if like i was to take my dad to different sports in the city would he be able to survive as an independent person and spoiler the answer is no Mm-hmm. So um, that's something that was personal to me and really touched me as a person and something that I reflected on in my application to Tufts. You know, 
personal motivation and connecting that to the projects that you do in your profile and your essay um, comes off as much more authentic when it's real, when it's your own life experiences. So that's something yeah. students can consider while crafting their own profile and their own application essays as well. Right, because I think there's a common myth that like, you know, like you need community service or to try to treat it as a check the box exercise. I, I don't think that's true at all. I'd see like, you know, do a little bit of introspection, look around in your community for an issue that personally touches you, an issue that you can solve. And then, yeah, go out and solve it. You you have the power to do that. So, yeah. Yeah, totally. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful episode of Spill the Tea with CC. Um, if you like this video, do be sure to hit subscribe, like the video, leave in the comments below whether you think Tops would be a good fit for you. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah.